So I've been using it in the garage and um, in lessons, and then I took it on a gig recently that where I knew that an amplifier was going to raise the eyebrows of the private uh, party in the very fancy home that um, that I had been invited to, and I wanted to bring an amp that would um, be uh, modest and fit in well and not scare anybody, and I felt like this would immediately be cooed over by the uh, people that appreciate such fine things, but uh, alas, it passed pretty much unnoticed. But, but you were thinking that just because it looks so classy? I just like thought it doesn't, it, it just looked right. It just seemed like it, uh, this was an art deco-y kind of apartment in, the, in San Francisco. And uh, it seemed to me that um, a, a kind of Fender, newish Fender amp or a Mesa boogie or something would just be, uh, would just feel like wearing a leather jacket to a, a fancy cocktail party. So. Uh, this was a more this was a seersucker suit uh, <laughs> to wear, and um, uh, at any rate, it sounded fantastic. And uh, as it has in each time I've I've used it, and uh, I've been surprised that I haven't actually. Once I start playing, it's not an amp from 1940. Uh, Hasten to add that that is not what I played at the fancy party in San Francisco in the Art Deco apartment. What, what did you play there? Well, we played jazz standards uh, per the uh, request of the people. Um, uh, like, for instance, Smoke It's In Your Eyes. When I started to overhear a conversation about this man's famous, this man's collection of famous rock photographs, we snuck in a Led Zeppelin song just to see if anyone would raise an eyebrow, but it seemed they were preoccupied. It was called the Rain Song. of the rain. 
train song probably ever played.